You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. Young lives remembered. One Maryland school community mourns the loss of two children while walking to school. And more hostages released. How many more innocent lives are out of the clutch of Hamas? And the local woman's plea for her uncle's safe return. And a shopping showdown, the holiday rush to check off your gift list. And ahead of Cyber Monday deals. Plus tumultuous travel preparing you for the rush on the roads to possible airport delays as the holiday weekend ends. And I'll have their holiday travel forecast coming up in a little bit, but we'll also be talking some temperatures which are bottoming out once again. A chilly night across the area. We'll talk about that in your full seven day forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott, and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6. I'm Ben Dennis. Happening right now, mourners are at Riverdale Elementary School in Maryland. They gathered for a vigil for two young girls who were struck and killed while they walked to school on Monday. The service started about an hour ago. That's where we find DC News Now's Dave Laval. Dave, so many emotions raw on full display tonight. Tell us more. Well, good evening to you, Ben. An incredibly emotional vigil that just wrapped up about maybe 20 minutes ago. You had several hundred people who gathered to remember the two young lives lost Monday morning, as you said, as they walked to school here. People came to remember 10-year-old Shalom Maba and 5-year-old Sky Sosa. They walked across the street towards the school Monday morning with an adult male when a driver in a van came through, slammed into them, killed the two young children. The adult uh, was not seriously hurt, as you said, and as you can imagine, an incredibly emotional night for many people who spoke, including Shalom's mother. Just to say thank you for everyone. For the book of the Lord says, Join us and celebrate. We will join you and celebrate. And the principal and others spoke, said that counselors are still available for parents, students who need them to, who are still having a tough time dealing with what happened. Members of the local Maryland State Congre Delegation also spoke and said they're committed to finding solutions to prevent future tragedies like this one from happening. One possible solution, more cameras at stop signs to catch drivers who commit crimes in school zones. We did hear back from Prince George's County Police earlier because they still have not released the name of the driver involved. In an email statement, police told us they don't release the names of individuals who are cooperating with them. We're live at Riverdale Elementary School. Dave Laval, DC News Now. Thanks to Dave tonight. And we're tracking the latest in the Middle East as the war between Israel and Hamas continues. But new details tonight. Hamas has agreed to release more than 13 Israeli and seven foreign hostages in exchange for 39 Palestinians imprisoned in Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that the released hostages include seven children and six women. This comes after Hamas initially delayed the swap, claiming Israel violated their ceasefire agreement. Meantime, coming up in our next half hour, we have the chance to sit down with a Maryland woman whose uncle is still among those hostages being held in Gaza. Her pleas to get him back safely tonight. And a new update to the story we broke to you last night. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is expected to survive after being stabbed by another inmate yesterday. That's according to Minnesota's attorney general. That condition shared just last night. No updates since. Someone f familiar with the matter told the Associated Press the attack happened at the Federal Correctional Institution in Tucson, Arizona. The facility is a medium security prison that struggles with security lapses and staffing shortages. No other injuries have been reported. In the district, police are investigating a shooting in Northwest. Officials say that it happened on Q Street around 10 this morning. The victim was conscious and breathing at the scene before being sent to the hospital. Police say the suspect is wearing a ski mask and fled the scene in a gray sedan. Police are asking anyone with information to give them a call. Also in the nation's capital, an investigation, another shooting in Northwest. It happened just before 7.30 this morning on W Street. 
Police say the man who was shot was conscious and breathing when he was sent to the hospital. That investigation is ongoing. Meantime, in Prince William County, officials are touting success of a campaign launched this summer to keep kids aware of the risks of fentanyl. DC News Now's Tosin Fakile is in the studio with more. The fentanyl exposed campaign launched in July and it shows kids in Prince William County the threats fentanyl poses and look to reduce the risk of overdose and county leaders say the campaign which appeared on several social media platforms had more than 6 million impressions to teens in Prince William County impressions are how often content appeared on a user's screen. The awareness campaign featured a teen centered website that had key information about the risk of fentanyl and fentanyl lace substances like illicit pills and powders and ways to prevent overdose and overdose death. It also had a social media campaign with fentanyl and naloxone educational information that reached teenagers. Officials calling it a success because they say through tracking comment replies, personal stories and questions among other metrics that the campaign reached its target audience. They say the campaign put out an Instagram poll that asked teens if they had heard of naloxone, the life-saving overdose reversal drug. Of the over 1,300 who responded to that poll, 63% had not heard of naloxone. Once they were aware of the reversal drug, 51% of teens said they would carry the fentanyl antidote. Now, county officials say campaign messages and videos were on places like YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. The campaign has a website. You can find the link on our DC News website. The website is dcnewsnow.com. In the studio, I'm Tosin Fakile. Back to you. Our thanks to Tosin tonight. To your weather now with Scott Sumner, who just yesterday forecasted exactly what we saw today with your highs and lows. Way to nail it, Scott. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, take a look at the high uh, for today. 45 degrees. The average high uh, should be 55, 10 degrees below that mark. 34 was the morning low, and the average low, 39 degrees. Record high, 79, set back in 1973. Record low, 18 in 1950. Right now, we're sitting at 41 degrees under partly cloudy skies in the district and elsewhere. As uh, we see those uh, sun set already, uh, we're going to continue to see a drop in those temperatures here on the 40s into the 30s if you aren't already in the 30s. And pretty much holding in the 30s. Matter of fact, down to the freezing mark here around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning for the district. So yes, it is going to be another chilly night, although we will have an increase in clouds building across the area. But the reason for the chill here is high pressure off to the north. That's the one that's going to give us a chilly, sky, a chilly air mass tonight. But you see clouds down around the Roanoke area. Those will be moving on in. So eventually over time, we'll see a buildup of those clouds here overnight into your Sunday. 34, 32, and 31 is the forecast and hour by hour forecast for Frederick here for between 7 at 11 p.m. I'll have your seven day forecast coming up in just a little bit. Ben. Under the cover. Thank you, Scott. It is Small Business Saturday and locally owned businesses across Northern Virginia are getting ready for a holiday that boosts their profits, connects them with the community and keeps more money in your pockets. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcella takes us inside several of those shops. It's the sound of a sale. And for small businesses across the DMV, one they hope and expect to hear often. This is one of our um, favorite displays to put together in the store. Eileen McGurvey is the owner of One More Page Books in Arlington. She's getting her shop ready for one of her favorite days of the year, Small Business Saturday. It's tough to be in this area. It's expensive you know, to rent space and things like that. So we're always, you know, looking for a way to, to get the word out there. Looking for a unique way to bring customers to the register and to neighboring businesses, One More Page Books came up with a list of more than a dozen spots in Arlington and Falls Church. And if shoppers go to any five of them, they can enter a raffle for more small business prizes. If we're all stronger, we can all help each other. So we're very supportive of the other stores that are around us. At the dog park on King Street in Alexandria, co-owner Marcus Panis is working to get his shop ready for the furriest clientele and the smallest shoppers. We see the largest uh, chunk of our revenue coming in over these months. Panis says this week and this celebration of businesses is the beginning of the best time of year for his shop. They're doing 10% off the entire store on both Friday and Saturday, and he echoes McGurvey's testament about the importance of friendly competition. It all comes back. It goes around in a big circle, and it's for everybody's success. King Street is ready for the holiday season, as are these and many other shops, preparing for a day of both giving and of getting.
We have a full list of the Arlington and Falls Church shops participating in the Small Business Passport Program, as well as other shops across Northern Virginia participating in Small Business Saturday. Just go to our website, dcnewsnow.com. Reporting in Alexandria, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Our thanks to Max. In the district, Mayor Muriel Bowser is encouraging residents to shop small and buy from local businesses. With today being Small Business Saturday, part of the day, DC is unveiling the hashtag I Buy DC Challenge. Buy from a local business and post a picture. They say mention the business, use the hashtag I Buy DC. The challenge is in partnership with the Department of Small and Local Business Development. And in Hagerstown, our Stephen Cohen gives us a look at how businesses in Western Maryland are dealing with some of the challenges the holiday shopping season can pose on those smaller businesses. The National Retail Federation says consumer spending will grow maybe 3 to 4 percent this season, slower than usual. The question is, will shoppers be buying local? Black Friday and Small Business Saturday can be a little challenging. Um, after COVID, um, a lot of online shopping uh, has happened, but where we um, differentiate from our competition is when you come in here, you get that specialized service. Local shopper Mark Bergeron sees those advantages most of the time. Uh, those uh, boutique type shops, you just can't find those things in a big box store. So we definitely like to hit those, support that local business. But on the other hand, we do do that online shop and we do hit some of the big boxes. There's a little bit of convenience there that you might not find in that selection. Deb Williams puts local merchants on the top of her shopping list. It, it does help support, support locals, and it, it's a good idea if you have gifts that you need to buy. And as Paul Ring says, local merchants know their customer, like the wife making her Black Friday purchase. Uh, when she comes in here, we know her and her husband. We know her husband's sizes. Um, we can see what purchases he's already made and uh, make sure that's a special Christmas gift just for him. And with higher prices at the grocery store, student loans, and interest on credit card payments, consumers are being a little more cautious this year. Reporting from Hagerstown, Stephen Cohen, DC News Now. Our thanks to Stephen and people across the DMV are racing to get their Christmas trees with Thanksgiving in the rearview mirror. Farms across the area are seeing families come and take home their perfect tree. Even with all the cheer in the air, there are some important things to remember when you're picking up that tree. Montgomery County Fire recommends everybody uh, to remind themselves about tree safety. They say there are a few simple steps to take to avoid any problems. First, try to pick a tree that does not have too many falling, uh, falling um, spurs off because of they might be flammable. Also, make sure that your tree is at least three feet away from any heat source like a fireplace. Also, always turn off or unplug your Christmas tree before leaving home or going to bed.